Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
oh God. Thank you for being a lawyer in the courtroom, oh God. Thank you for being the Prince of Peace, oh God. The Lord of Lords, oh God. The Great I Am, the Emmanuel, God with us. Anybody feel his presence today? Some of us are running, some leaping, and some crawling. But this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I feel like it today. Hallelujah. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. You are more than a conqueror. I think those scripture cards about to come into play. Hallelujah. Jesus said unto him, if thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Do I have any believers in here today? Do I got anybody that want to wave their hands, oh God? I dare you to command your body today. This is the day. Hallelujah. Let us go with the praise team and encourage them today. Hallelujah.
a blessing. I'm on the assignment to pray. But I would never disrupt someone's praise who ain't been in the building for three weeks. You get the opportunity to come in and worship together with the brethren. Sometimes the Lord has to take something away from you. Hallelujah! Sorry for y'all that are at home, but there's a different atmosphere in here. And when you ain't been in the building for a minute, and at home just ain't the same for you. When you get in the building, they get caught. And I remember we used to sing a song called, I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live, but oh, I'm glad to be in the service. to turn this to a praise service. We about to turn this into a praise and worship service. I wish y'all would go ahead and just lift up your hands and worship God. I wish you would just know that all of your troubles are in your shout. If you would just shout it out, it would come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To be in the service. One more time. I'm glad to be in the service. See, y'all, we senior saints used to say that with tears in their eyes. And we didn't understand it when we was young kids. And they used to sing, I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Again, listen, my grandmother used to say, one more time. One more time. One more time, I'm glad to be in the service. One more time, say that again, y'all. One more time, one more time. be 
in the service. Yeah. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. We didn't have to let me live. We didn't have to let me live. And I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. No music, no music. Come on, y'all. All school. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just means something different to me now. Means something different to me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pause. Oh God, to say thank you. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this worship service, oh God, whether we're in the building or at home, God, we ask for your Shekinah glory to fall. God, we need you right now. All of the problems, all of the struggles, all of the situations that we're going through right now. God, we need you to lift the heavy burden. God, you said in your word, cast our cares upon you for you care for us. God, so right now, as we are placing them at your feet, we're leaving them there knowing that you can change our situation. Why worry about a thing that we're praying for? If we're giving it to you, God, God, then we understand that you got all power in your hands. So, God, we ask right now, oh, God, that you would take it from us so that we can give your name glory today. God, so that we can worship you in spirit and in truth on today. Bless those that are sick. Bless those that are mourning. God, bless those that are going through right now, God. Financial issues, God. We ask right now that you would provide the increase. Those that are on our sick and shut in. God, those who have COVID-19, a positive diagnosis, God. But we thank you, oh God, that you're going to keep them and sustain them through it all. God, we ask right now, oh God, that you would touch the word that is going to go forth on today. God, we need a word. We need a life-changing word, God. We're going through struggles on different levels, oh God. Elevation means new levels, new devils, God. And we ask right now, God, that you would give us the word that will help us on this level. God, we just thank you for it in advance. We just believe you for it in advance. We praise you for it in advance because we know, God, praise confuses the mind of the enemy. God, he doesn't understand why if he's applying so much pressure that the pressure doesn't break the pipes. It pr produces praise, God. So we thank you, God, that the pressure is producing praise and purpose. So God, we ask right now that as it's pressed upon us, that we would understand our purpose is coming out of us. God, and we give your name the glory, oh God. We ask that you would touch us all that we will be pleasing in your eyesight. It is in Jesus' name we thank you and do pray. Amen. Come on, praise team.
Worship means what is he worth to you? Can you give God 30 seconds? You've been so good. Sing that softly. You've been so good. You've been. Come on, worship, worship. 20 seconds. So good. You've been. Come on, 10 seconds. You've been so good. You've been so good to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know the Lord's been good. Just say hallelujah. Just give God praise. For he's worthy of all the praise, glory, and the honor. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team. Amen. We come to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. And we bless God that we were able to be back in the building. Amen. This is on a Sunday by Sunday basis, uh, depending on you know what uh, the results are going to be from today. We got to make sure we're social distancing. Make sure that we are keeping our mask on at all times, and we'll see. But it's gl I'm glad to be in the service, amen? Amen. I'm glad to be, y'all, I'm telling you sometimes, in order to appreciate a thing, God has to take the thing away from you, amen? And I'm telling you, being in here three weeks, just me and my wife, it definitely gave me a greater appreciation for you guys being here. I don't care if it's two of y'all. It's more than just us. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Not to say that I don't appreciate her for riding out with me for the three weeks. Amen. And I thank God for her. Amen. And um, I, I, I definitely don't know what I would do without her. But I thank God that she uh, ride or die with me. Amen. Amen. We're going to go into the word of God because I've already used up most of my time. But there is a word from the Lord. We're coming from John chapter 4, amen, verses 39 through 42. Now let me explain something to y'all. I'm going to be preaching throughout from 1, verse 1, all the way to 42. But I did not want to bore you by reading the entire story. So when you get an opportunity to have a greater understanding and appreciation for the sermon on today, read the entire story, but I'm going to read uh, the summarization of the story, which is in verses 39 through 42, and preach the details. Amen? Amen. John chapter 4, verses 39 through 42 in the New Living Translation. Let's read it together. It says, Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. When they come out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed for two days, long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, now we believe, 
not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. Now, now we know that he is indeed the savior of the world. And that is the reading of the text. And I want to preach from the simple subject, the unworthy witness. The unworthy witness. Look at your neighbor around you and say, I'm an unworthy witness. Amen. I'm an unworthy witness. And I solicit your prayers. My brothers and sisters, as we look at this particular text, what you will find out is that Jesus, in verses 1 through 3, explains that he has to leave uh, Jerusalem, he has to leave Judea and go over to Galilee. In the process of him leaving Judea and going over to Galilee, he has to make a stop in Samaria. And in the process of him leaving, the reason why he has to leave Judea is because that he had saved too many people. The Bible says that too many people had heard what Jesus had to offer, and they, it was too many people getting baptized even more than John the Baptist. So what you will find out is that Jesus, not out of fear, but wisdom, moves to a different location. Now, pause in order to say that again, not out of fear, he does it out of wisdom and moves to a different location. I'll say it again for those who didn't pay attention, and let me make it plain for you. We close not out of fear, but out of wisdom because of what the information we had. It wasn't that we were fearful of coronavirus. It was just out of wisdom. And Jesus wasn't afraid of the people. He was just using wisdom to go from one location to another. And what I love about Jesus is that every time Jesus did something, he did it under the unction of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and just because one pastor don't close don't mean that they're not under the Spirit. You have to do things according to your congregation and the wisdom that God is giving you. And so a lot of us are trying to accuse one another of not being spiritual for whether or not we're opening or closing, but you have to use wisdom through the Holy Spirit on what to do. So he moves in the process of the Holy Spirit telling him to move. And from one destination, George, he goes to the next destination, but there's a Samaria in the middle. Somebody say there's a Samaria in the middle. In the middle, in the process of going somewhere, the Bible says that Jesus gets tired. And the disciples go into Samaria to find him some food, but he goes to the well to get him something to drink. But he gets to the well and there is no bowl for him to, or no string for him to draw the water, but there's a woman who is thirsty. And this is the thing, he, she gets introduced to him at the well. How many people out there can say it's good to know Jesus? Uh, 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 she gets introduced to Jesus to have a relationship with Jesus. And, and, and in the process, she learns that Jesus is the well. And what most of us don't understand is that what the blessing in this virus and this pandemic is the fact that you know Jesus. Is there somebody that can say the only reason why I ain't lost my mind is because I know Jesus. The, the only reason why I ain't gave up is because I know Jesus. The only reason why I'm still standing is because I know Jesus. Because the enemy that came at me with everything that he had, he didn't came at me through my babies. He didn't came at me through my relationship. He didn't came at me through the job. He didn't came at me through this virus. So many deaths in my family. But thanks be unto God that I know Jesus. Do I got a witness out here that can say it's good to know Jesus? It's good to have an encounter 
word with Jesus for the Bible says that no man comes to the son unless the father draws you huh? so you are privileged to know Jesus you're, you're privileged to be able to call upon his name that's the reason why the room got excited because you just can't call on my friend's name without me getting excited do I got somebody in here that can say he's a friend to the friendless he's a, a mother to the motherless a father to the fatherless he's a lawyer in the courtroom he's a doctor to the sick I, 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 it's good to know Jesus it's the only thing that's been kept me is my relationship with Jesus I, I, I should have lost my mind as a matter of fact, I did lose my mind. But he gave it back to me just because I know Jesus. <laughs> she gets introduced to Jesus. I just wanted to pause for a moment and say, aren't you glad that he didn't give you over to a reprobate of mine? <laughs> Out of all the conspiracy theories, that have come up. Why do you still believe in a Jesus, this uh, uh, this mystical Jesus? How, how is it that God came through the form of a virgin, through a, uh, uh, through Mary, and, and, and came up through 40 and two generations and, and, and died? How can a God die? But it's good to know Jesus. And I can't explain it all in details. I, I'm not a theologian, but I know what he's done for me. Is there anybody that can say, God, I just thank God it's good to know Jesus. midst of a pandemic it's the only thing I've been holding on to Jesus is the only name I can call on when I'm in the middle of a nightmare and it pulled me up out of my sleep. Jesus is the only one I can call on when I'm hitting my brakes and my brakes ain't working and I'm in the middle of an accident. Why, well, Jesus is the only one I can call on when I'm in the hospital bed looking over my loved one and don't know what to do. Jesus is the only one. know about y'all but he's the only one that's been consistent y'all I, I even in my disappointments for these he's been consistent even when the outcome wasn't the way I wanted it to be he was still consistent it's good to know Jesus uh I ain't mean to stay there that long uh because oh, I got to get on with this text. Um, but what you will find out, uh, Reverend Riggs, is that she doesn't get an opportunity to meet Jesus until she was thirsty enough. You don't go to the well if you ain't thirsty. Might I submit that God is waiting for you to get thirsty enough to show up in your situation? Because some of us ain't desperate enough. Some of us ain't thirsty enough. Some of us ain't hungry enough. And God is saying, I'm going to meet you right at the place where you make your own decision to go to the well. Is there somebody in here that can say, in this season, I'm not just going to sit on my hind parts. I'm going to get up and do something and let God meet me at the well. Huh? Because if I want something to get done, I got to get up and start walking by faith and not by sight. Do I got somebody in here that can say, I know what God is saying to me in this season. I know he's telling me to walk on water, but if I don't get up and move my limbs, uh, then I can't experience the miracles uh, that God is about to do in my life. Look around and say, are you thirsty enough? Are you thirsty enough? Are you thirsty enough? Are you thirsty enough? Do you go after it? Uh, 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 in this season of elevation, are you going to go after it? Are you going to have more dedication when it's time for the fast in February? Are you going to overlook it? Are you, you going to look at it as an opportunity to get closer to my destiny? Is there somebody in here that can say, listen, I, uh, I'm so hungry after God that I'm not letting nothing in the way. I'm, I'm cutting off people. I'm cutting off relationships. I'm, I'm cutting off social media. I'm cutting off things. Anybody that's getting in the the way of me and my purpose is getting cut off. Because I'm hungry in this season. And, and, and here's the thing. Uh, I'm tired 
of being sick and tired. Y'all, I'm tired of being dizzy. Y'all missed it. I'm tired. Reason why you can't gather yourself. Reason why you don't know which way you're going is because you're too busy going in circles. But God says, are you thirsty enough? Are you hungry enough to let him go? Are you hungry enough? Are you thirsty enough to let her go? Are you hungry enough and are you thirsty enough to let them go? Because pushing into your purpose is lonely. Y'all, I'm in a text. She's at the well by her. I, I, I'm glad I got somebody. She's at the well by herself. She got thirsty enough to say, where, where, where the bucket? You ain't going to go get the water. I'll go get it for myself. Where the bucket at? Y'all, and I want to tell y'all, I want to humbly submit that you got to look for the bucket. You got to look for the bucket and say, where, where, where the bucket at? Because I, I, I'm tired of being thirsty, and I'm tired of people having to spoon feed me. Here you are waiting on people to wait on you. And God has said, I gave you the activity. Get up, grab the bucket. If you thirsty enough, go get some water. But I, 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 I'm sorry. As much as I love H2O, I ain't talking about H2O. Woo! Text says that she meets Jesus, and the first thing Jesus says is, give me a drink of water. Uh, she says, I'm sorry, but I could tell by your attire, sir, that you're a Jew. Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Can I educate y'all for one second? When it says, when the text says they have no dealings, it don't mean that they don't speak to them. It's obvious because the disciples have went into Samaria to get food. They had no dealings with them. Then why am I going to buy your food? I ain't going to patronize you if I don't have nothing to do with you. But what the meaning of the text is, is that they didn't sup with them. They didn't drink. They didn't eat with them. Because eating and drinking with somebody was sacred. Be careful of the people you have at your table. I said, be careful of the people that you entertain at your table because it's detrimental because they're closer to you. That's why they stabbing you in the side because they sitting at your table and they're learning all of your weaknesses and the reason why they caught you with your armor down is because you set them at the table. Is there somebody in here that say, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm observating my table. I'm, I'm taking observation of the people that are sitting at my table. Everybody can't just sit around me. I, I'm too anointed. It's time for you to have confidence in yourself and confidence in the anointing in you. And if you're going to drain me, then you got to leave me. But if you're going to come and, and, and charge me, then I can put you at the table with me because then I can finally let my guard down. Y'all, let me make a notice. Let me let a notice for everybody so you won't be surprised when your pastor is no longer your Facebook friend. Because in this season, I'm cutting... Lord, thank you for holding my tongue because I wanted to say I'm cutting the BS, but I'm cutting anybody. Look, I'm cutting anybody that's on it. So if you if you own it and you 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 you, I, I, I'm sick and tired of, of seeing people dropping it like it's hot on my page. If Pastor not your friend no more, just understand that I'm going to a new level, and I don't need people at my table that's going to drain me and that's going to entertain the flesh in me. Y'all, at some point, you got to get thirsty enough. At some point, 
you got to be desperate enough to say, listen, they ain't worth my anointing. There's too much of an investment in me for me to allow you to taint and prolong. There's too many people that's waiting on my witness for you to sit up and taint the thing that God placed in me. Listen, if you got something negative to say about what I'm doing and I'm doing what I'm doing out of the purpose of God, then I need to exit you out of my table. Reverend Riggs, if they don't believe in the burnout coach, then coach them out of your life. You got to learn that if I'm doing this for God, and this is something God told me to stretch out and do, and you got negativity to keep on saying, why am I sitting you at my table? Because what you have been done, you've been placed strategically to talk me out of my anointing. But you don't have to. You don't have to put them at your table. I can love you from afar. It wasn't that I had no dealings with the Samaritans. I just didn't, I just didn't sit down and chill. <laughs> y'all, y'all, here, I didn't mean to be on that point that long either. Um, uh, um, but here's what, what blessed me is that Felice sits down and first thing, he points out, Gwen, is the fact that uh, I know your faults. First thing he asks her, he says, while you're at it, while you're going to give me some water, bring your husband. Uh, she said, um, the water I can get, but the husband... We got a problem. Here's what's funny, because theologians try to say that she was divorced five times. And I want to humbly submit that that's not true. You know why? Because if you pay attention to the text, what you'll find out is that Jesus says, and the one you're with now, if she was with him now and he was her husband, she could go fetch him. What he was saying was, you have husbands because of consummation. In other words, what he was saying is, I'm pulling out your faults. And you're giving up yourself and you don't even have the reward of going to get them. To stand by you so that y'all can get saved together. Woo. It's too much text, not enough time. Oh. Don't lay with somebody that you can't pray with. That you can't bring to the altar with. Y'all, I'm not saying that people don't make mistakes. But if we can't make our mistakes and repent together, then maybe I'm hooked up with the wrong person. Because Jesus was calling her to repentance. And said, go get the person you was laying with so that I could save both of y'all. She couldn't even get him to come back. She couldn't even convince him to come back. Because I want to humbly submit that she was a woman of the night. <laughs> if you're with somebody and Jesus calls them your husband, it's not the ceremony that makes you the husband. It's not the ceremony that makes you the wife. It's what consummates it, which is in the bed. So what he says is, you got a husband, but he ain't your husband. Now, if Jesus was going to say this woman, why do he bring this up? What's the point? He says that even though you have these faults and Jews have all these strict rules of the Mo Mosaic law, I'm still talking to you. <laughs> that was your cue to shout. Because out of all of the faults that I have, out of all the issues that I have just on yesterday, 
I can't even sit here and talk about my yesteryear. I, I'm talking about my yesterday. And out of all the things that I done been through and all the stuff that I done did that was not pleasing unto God, it's just a blessing that he still talks to me. Is there somebody in here that can say, thank you, God, that you look beyond my faults and you see me every last one of my knees. You, you woke me up this morning. You, you gave me food on my table. You, you allow my babies to be alive. You, you allow me to be able to have the activity of my life. Might be in pain, but I thank God that I'm still walking. I, I thank God that I'm still here because I'm a candidate for a miracle as long as I'm still living and breathing. So thank you, God, that in the midst of me sinning last night, that the wages of sin is death, and you woke me up. Watch this. Text says that even though she's got problems, he still says, I'll give you the solution. He offers her the water that she would never thirst again. She's confused. She says, what do you mean that I would never thirst again? Is your water better than Jacob's well? He says, listen, this water will leave you thirsty. My water will spring up out of you. And you will quench the thirst of other people with what I put inside. Y'all, listen to what he says. He says, I need you to go get the water after I give you the water. He gives her the water, she goes back and testifies to the town. And all the men come out. <laughs> I said, she testifies to the town and all the men come out. Y'all missed that. Y'all get that on 96. Her customers... Wanted to know who know about us. <laughs> who know about us and our midnight situations? They come out and experience a Jesus that doesn't judge them. Y'all, the church will be full to capacity if the people would experience a Jesus that don't judge them. Y'all, there's people right now that have put down the church and said, I'll never come back. Because when they got to the church, the church judged them. But here it is, Jesus is with a harlot and its customers and offers them salvation when... Jews have no dealings. The Jews did not accept Jesus, so he offers it to Samaria. Y'all, the reason why the church is empty, the reason why there's an attack on the church, the reason why don't nobody want to hear what the preacher has to say is because the people in the church have judged the people of the world. Now, understanding that the Bible says all have sinned. Baby, if we uncover half of your mess. Yo, that's why the church is being exposed with social media. Because now people got cameras. People are attacking people in the church on social media. Because so many people have been attacked by the church. But this woman becomes the unworthy witness because even though she wasn't worthy of even talking to Jesus, she spreads the gospel. Y'all, here we are, here we are, talking about women not supposed to spread the gospel. Can I push this plug in here? This woman had influence. Her influence drew the As y'all would say, all the boys to the yard. 
they had to assemble because of this woman. And in the process of her using her influence, she got the whole town saved. Y'all, only because she came in count in, with an encounter with the non-judging Jesus. He says, I understand what you've been through. I know what you're going through, but let me offer you me. Because how can you sin less without me? Y'all, I say be sinless. I'm talking about sin less. Because it's not that we don't sin. Is that as Jesus grows inside of us through the Holy Spirit, we sin lesser than we used to. That's the reason why I shout the way I do. Because when I look back over how much I used to sin, baby, it ain't, it ain't even a teaspoon. Oh, as much as I... Y'all don't understand how much God has changed me and changed my life on the way I used to be. How many people can honestly say that I have, I have grown up in God and I see the maturity in me and I, I see how I, I I would have cussed that person out. I see how I would have turned around. You ever been in a car and say, did they just really play me like that and want to turn around and make a U-turn and go back and point the finger and give them a piece of your mind, but God tells you to keep on driving? You got to understand there is progress that's being made in you. That's the reason why Jesus says in order to you for you to be saved, you must be born again. And the reason why he's saying that is that you got to have a changed mind. And how many people out here can say, I got to change mind because I would have lost it long time ago I would have cut somebody up long time matter of fact today somebody didn't speak to me but I thank God that he changed me and not them and I'm so worried about them getting changed but I thank God that he's changing me do I got somebody that can say thank thanks God thanks be unto God that I'm changing and he's changing me in the right way text says that he's he allowed her to witness but watch this. Here's the, here, I'm about to get out of here. It's already 12 o'clock. Um, it says uh, that she comes, gets the men. The men come back. They experience Jesus for themselves. Did y'all notice they didn't want to give her full credit? If you look at the text, she said they say, now that we've witnessed him. It's not just on your testimony alone. But we now know he is the savior of the world for ourselves. Sounds like Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 to me. For we overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the work. Somebody got, some, somebody read the Bible. And, and the words of our testimony and most of us don't understand is that your testimony has to be coupled with Jesus. And the reason why it wasn't coupled with his blood here is because it hadn't been shed yet. But the reason why that they got saved and the reason why she was the unworthy witness was because she was able to witness to them and they and brought them to Jesus. See, your witness should take people to Jesus. If they don't come to church, it should at least make them open up the Bible. For the Bible says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and we beheld his glory, meaning that Jesus is the word. So even if you just point them to the Bible and say listen read for yourself. Huh? Study to show yourself approved. Your witness should point them to Jesus and when you point them to Jesus then Jesus will save them. Is there anybody in here that can say I got a witness to give to somebody. No I don't know the Bible and no I'm not a theologian but I got a story to tell. Do I got somebody that can say yeah I might be unworthy to you but I'm just going to witness anyway. Huh? I'm going to tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me because because on one Friday he died and got up on Sunday with all power and the reason why I have a solution for sin is because he got up with all power. Do I got a witness up in here that can say I thank God for the blood of Jesus. Huh? Even over 2,000 years later it still works. Huh? Do I got somebody that can give God a praise and say my, my testimony with Jesus blood is a bad thing. Huh? If I put that thing together huh, I can change my family. If I put that thing together huh, I can change my church. Huh? If I put that thing together, I can make everybody better. Huh? Put your witness with God's word. Y'all, all of us are unworthy witnesses.
witnesses. But we're still witnesses the same. God is looking for you to witness. Tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. Can't nobody tell my story like me. You can witness my story. You ever have somebody trying to tell your story and you say, and you interrupt them and say, uh uh. Uh uh. No, let me tell it. Because you're missing some stuff. I need you to say it with some more intensity. I, I literally lost my mind. I literally didn't know what I was doing. I literally was broken, didn't have, my account was in the negative. I literally didn't have a car. I, I literally didn't have a job. I, I, you got to be able to tell your own story. Tell somebody, I, I can't explain it other than Jesus. Your story should be so good that it compels them to check their own faith. You heard what I said? Your story should be so good that it should make them check their own faith. Understanding that not having faith is still faith. Because you got to have faith to not have faith. So even if they're an atheist, it'll make them check their faith. Because what will happen be a situation where they don't know the answer. One thing they can remember is that when you went through, you called upon Jesus. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord, in other words, what he's saying is try it. And that atheist will say, God, if you're there, save me in this situation. And the only reason why they knew that God was the answer was because you witnessed and told them that he's the only one who answered all my problems. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Tell God, thank you for making me the unworthy witness. Listen, if there's anybody in here that have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity to get saved. If you're online and you have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior, this is a good time for you to get saved. God says, listen, you got a story to tell. And we're removing judgment just like Jesus did. God will accept you just the way you are. I know a lot of people use the comment, come as you are, but that's not biblical. Jesus just says, come unto me. All you are weary and heavy laden, and I will provide rest for you. Aren't you tired of trying everything else and not getting any answers? Jesus is the answer to the hole in your soul. Jesus is the answer. He quenches the thirst that you cannot seem to quench with water, Gatorade, liquor. He's the hunger that you hunger after that nothing seems to satisfy. He's the answer. He's the solution. And if you hear me compelling you, that is the Father drawing you to Jesus. He's telling you and compelling you that this is the day for you to get saved. This is the day for you to make a choice. You can do that just by accepting him as your Lord and Savior. All you have to do is repeat after me. Say, I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins and God raised him from the dead. Because I believe that, I am saved right now. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 said, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that he died for your sins and God raised him from the dead, that you shall be saved. If you believe that, you are saved right now. God accepts you into his kingdom. And here's something a lot of preachers don't want to tell you. Is that you're sealed into the day of redemption. Now, church, the institution of the church, helps you along your Christian journey, your discipleship journey. 
But church isn't required for your salvation. As we all can see, from the three weeks being off, church makes things a little bit better. So find yourself a, a Bible-believing church. If you want to go back to your old church, go back to your old church. But we welcome you into the kingdom of God. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 Um, it's giving time. Amen. 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 I said it's giving time. We can get more excited about giving. Amen. Amen. The Lord has blessed us to be able to give. And so we have to um, we have to make sure that we are diligent with our faith to believe and give. If the Lord tells us to give, then we want to do that. And if God is telling us to elevate, we are elevating, then ask God the conviction of elevating your giving as well. I guarantee you, he won't steer you wrong. He will not steer you wrong. It's not a debt that you owe. It's a seed that you're sowing. And if God is telling you to sow this seed in faith, then do it. I'll, let me let me say this to you, and I, I, I'm just saying this from experience. We did just talk about witnessing. Every time I go through financial struggle, I give more. And every time I give more, it shortens my financial struggle. I'm just telling you my witness, this is my testimony, every time I give and be obedient unto God, not unto man, but unto God, when God tells me to do a thing, and I do it, and I stretch out on faith and do it, then I see the manifestation, and I reap the harvest of what I sow. Whether it be good health, whether my car stays uh, running and functioning, there's so many different things that happen that benefits um, benefits me through my giving. But for me, I'm gonna be honest. It comes back financial. It just comes back. Fine. The Lord blesses and the Lord gives me. I'm talking about before I was a pastor. I'm talking about knock on your door. Here's eight hundred dollars blessing. Like we we struggle, and I, I, that's why I say when you talk about giving your testimony, testifying that the man needed to get into the backyard to get to the building behind us, and decided to give us eight hundred dollars, and that was the exact amount of our was it our DTE bill or something, huh? Oh, getting our car fixed. She right. We needed our car fixed. Y'all had a. Geo Prism, I'm dating myself. <laughs> wife got into a wife got into an accident. Let this bless you. Wife got into an accident and we didn't have insurance. Not full coverage. We had no fault. And the accident bent the frame, which should have totaled the car. But we had a good friend by the name of Slim said I could fix that on Joy Roll and Livernoise. And he, he said he could fix it but it was $800 and they came and knocked on it. We, we said God we don't know. Yo, I, I wish I had somebody out here that knew living from paycheck to paycheck when you talking about when I get paid my check plus some is already when I say that's why, that's why people who don't manage their finances well, which that's us, when you get laid off, you tear the whole job up. When they miss a couple of days on your check, you be ready to kill somebody. Because we've already spent the money before it even reached our account. We are gonna work on that. Secure the bag is coming back. But in the process of doing that, I'm telling you the miracles that God can do. 
I'm telling you what he can do. And I'm just, I, somebody needed to hear that. Somebody needed to hear that. Uh, I don't, because let me tell y'all something. I, what God is teaching me in this elevated stage is to stop being a handicap. Do y'all hear what I said? Make sure y'all listen because I'm stopped being a handicap. You got to stretch out on faith. And God gave me the revelation. He said, you're stopping them from getting to me. You busy trying to, and I, I, I want to do everything for everybody. It's my heart. But God says, you're handicapping them and getting in the way of them getting to me. So pre be prepared to get some no's in this season. Be prepared. Be prepared. He said, I need them to trust me. And you're in the way because you keep saving. So that's why I went in on the giving like that because I need y'all to be faithful and just get what God has for you. I just wanted to take this time out and I, I just wanted to uh, acknowledge that um, my cousin Carl is the anniversary of his death today. And I, 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 you saved me a phone call, but I wanted to let her know my cousin Viral, her only son, is the passing. And I just wanted to say thank God for his life and his legacy. And thank God for you for even being in worship on today. We just loved you and loved him. And I just wanted to acknowledge that you are here worshiping the Lord on a day. You could have said, I'm going to just stay at home and just... Give me my time, but I want y'all to see the witness of where she got her help from. Say, so I need to be in the service. That's where my help is at. So bless God for her. We are, um, our announcements for this week, so we have Bible study, Wednesday, 6.30, amen, 6 a.m. prayer call, amen. Then we have our Sunday school this morning, 9.30. Uh, Minister Phillips did a great job. Amen. And then we have our leadership meeting on the 29th. Saturday is going to be via Zoom. We're trying to, we're trying to tell y'all, that's why those stairs are going up there for elevation. So we're trying to gear our leadership for elevation. And then happy birthday for the last two weeks because we didn't acknowledge last week for a birthday. So anybody who had any birthdays, God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. And we just pray that you enjoy your day. Amen? Amen. God bless you all. Um, and that's it. So uh, I'm going to go straight to the back because of COVID and everything. So we're going to get out of here as soon as possible. Know that I love you and I want to hug and love on you and everything. But we need to get out of here and not be in contact with each other as much as possible so that we will not spread the virus just in case you might be asymptomatic or whatever. So please, ma'am, please, sir, leave. <laughs> if you want to talk to somebody, talk to them outside. I guarantee you it's too cold to talk to people outside, so that conversation is going to be real short. Hey, girl, how you been doing? Oh, I'll call you. People don't like to be, they like, like to be cold. I'll tell you, I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give your name glory for what our eyes have seen, ears have heard, and most of all, what our hearts have felt. God, we ask that you would bless us as we leave here to be a witness. There's so many people out here that will never see the church, that will never get into the building. But God, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So, God, we ask right now that you would give us the witness to push them to Jesus, to give them a word that will help them in their everyday life. The Bible says that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. It's some people that need to overcome by the words that are coming out of our mouth. There's a water that is rushing out of our belly that God wants us to do in witness you said in your word that when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, it shall make us witnesses. So God, we ask right now that that Holy Spirit that's inside of us will give us the power to witness to somebody and tell them 
about a living Jesus. We love you. We thank you and praise you. We ask that you would walk with the walkers, ride with the riders, drive with the drivers. God, even be with the viewers as we depart and never leave your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Air hug somebody and say, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it.